In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Nothing can ever efface from my mind the memories of this week, this particular week each year of my seminary days. For all the seminarians of the Institute of Christ the King, the seminary is our home planet. It is our Rivendell, Griciliano. That holy place is memorable in any month. But May, the month of Mary, is truly special. The warm weather has arrived, so we enjoy especially our rosary walks and singing a hymn to Our Lady outside in the evening before Compline. And this week, the octave of the Ascension is the most special of all, for a great adventure looms large. Soon we must leave the quiet comfort of our Rivendell and set out on our great quest to the north. Sometimes we speed there on the wings of a sputtering easy jet. In other years, the 12-hour Paris night train is our sardine-packed steed. Whatever our initial transport, we all know we shall soon be on foot. The seminarians of Griciliano are packing their bags to prepare for the great Pentecost pilgrimage from the Cathedral of Notre Dame de Paris to the Cathedral of Notre Dame de Chartres. The 500-year-old walls of our seminary are buzzing in anticipation. Veteran pilgrims are singing the Chartres hymn and teasing younger seminarians with stories, not really exaggerated, of sleeping in the pouring rain and lancing their blisters by moonlight if the rain stops and the sky clears enough. While rookies are scrambling to borrow sleeping bags and good hats and shoes for the three-day march of over 60 miles. Those at least are my memories. I don't know if that's quite how it will be this year after everything that has happened in the world. But those among you who have made this pilgrimage in the past can well attest that there you find before your very eyes the truth of what the scripture tells us of the first Pentecost. At that time, there were men present out of every nation under heaven. Nearly 15,000 people from around the world take part in the pilgrimage to Chartres, a route which has been walked by pilgrims since the Middle Ages or correctly known as the Age of Faith. Early Saturday morning, on the vigil of Pentecost, the pilgrims crowd into the cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris and kneel for the intonation of the Veni Creato Spiritus. At the conclusion of the opening ceremony, they file out of the cathedral and divide into their various brigades, as the enormous column begins to form. On Saturday and Sunday, they unite under the universal language of the Church and attend the timeless Roman Mass outside in the French countryside. And in the evening, they sleep under the stars. At the end of the 60-mile march, they arrive at Chartres Cathedral for the closing Mass celebrated at the high altar. It is a Marian pilgrimage dedicated to Our Lady of Christendom for the restoration of the Catholic faith, which was once so boldly confessed in every nation on the continent of Europe. I have had the grace of making this pilgrimage four times. I fear I won't make it this year. But today I would like to share with you my two favorite memories of the pilgrimage to Chartres. The first is the walk to the campsite on Sunday afternoon, about the halfway point of the pilgrimage. As you walk through seemingly endless fields, for a short time, you are able to see the entire column at once, all these nations under heaven, 
who have gathered to carry their banners in profession of their Catholic faith. Then the great moment comes, the one moment during the three-day walk when, far in the distance, the spires of Chartres Cathedral can be seen. As the entire column of pilgrims falls to its knees, you stare out at those distant spires and hope that the Son of Man will now come in glory, for on this day at least he would find faith upon the earth. My other favorite memory is of the end of the pilgrimage, when the pilgrims begin to make their way home. Most of them have to catch a train in Paris, so they pile into the trains which have been reserved at Chart train station and make their way for the capital. I will never forget the first time I took one of those trains. As I disembarked at the station in Versailles, I was greeted by a sea of voices which were still singing the closing hymn from the Mass at Chartres Cathedral. Every other day of the year, people who live in the city must listen to screams, gunshots, and every sort of ungodly music. The Monday of Pentecost is different. Everyone must hear the hymn to the Blessed Virgin, which closes the Chartres pilgrimage every year. Chez nous, be our queen, chez nous, in our world, in our country, in our homes, in our hearts. We live in a world gone mad. It has now been over 80 years since Huxley wrote his Brave New World. He places his story 600 years in the future but he describes the society of that time, if the world's word still has any meaning, as having been in place for centuries already. His timeline is frighteningly accurate. We don't need to wait another 600 years for Huxley's genetically engineered world without family. It is upon us. I cannot begin to count all the things depicted in that book that have come to pass since I first read it in high school, the latest and most egregious being that the very word mother has become politically incorrect and unutterable. No one can abolish motherhood. We must trust in the words of Our Lady of Fatima, this post-Christian world shall convert and her immaculate heart shall triumph. That is why, whether it's Chartres or right here before Our Lady of Warsaw, we turn to that Mother of Mercy and implore her compassion for our fallen race. And if her divine Son should come again today in glory, let him find the faith of Pentecost in our hearts. Let him find us, like the apostles of old, gathered around our Blessed Mother, singing in every language under heaven, She nous be our queen. Amen.